With over 8 million copies sold in just 6 days, it is no doubt that Power World has been a massive success worldwide. And whether you've been playing it since day 1 or have recently just picked up the game to enjoy over the weekend, here are some tips and tricks I wish I knew earlier. This first one, you've probably already seen somewhere over the internet if you've been looking at some tips and tricks for Power World as it has become pretty common. However, I am going to include it anyway as it is one of the most useful mechanics in the game. And what we're talking about is when you become over encumbered by having too much weight on you while you're out mining, which is going to happen pretty often in this game, even though you can't walk whatsoever, you're still going to be able to use your grappling gun. Meaning that you can be like 10,000 units overweight and not be able to walk at all. But as long as you're relatively close to a fast travel point, you can use your grapple to slowly go towards your fast travel point and then teleport back to your base with all of the materials with you. A few useful side notes to this tip is that you can actually have more than one grappling gun. There's nothing stopping you from crafting three to four grappling guns and then simply using one and while that one's on cooldown, use your next one and then quickly go between them. That way you haven't got to wait as long for the cooldown to get back to the fast travel point while you're over encumbered. Another useful tip for this is make sure that your storage box or a storage box at least is very close to your power box where you teleport to in your base. This way, as soon as you spawn in at your base, you can just quickly grapple right next to your box and place everything there and not have to travel all the way across your base with like 10,000 weight. Now that we're on the topic of mining anyway, here are some of the most useful mining spots in the game. First of all, ore is going to be one of the most important things you're ever going to need for the ingots. And here is a really good ore farming location right next to a fast travel point as well. So it's really, really good. Once you advance a little bit in the game, you're going to need a bunch of sulfur as well. This is used for making the bullets, the ammo. And there's a really good farm spot right here next to this fast travel point at the tower in the volcano. And the best location for coal that I've found so far is right here in the small desert near Anubis. Now there isn't a fast travel point right next to this one unfortunately, however if you ever advance further enough in the game to have a second or third base, you can do what I do and simply place this extra base near the coal, and that way you have a fast travel point to get there. And of course you can use this spare base fast travel tip really for anywhere on the map, if there's any locations you find yourself going back to, whether it's a cool location for screenshots of your powers or a really useful resource, anything like that, always use your power base as sort of a fast travel, as really you don't need three power bases for anything in this game, in my opinion. Now inside your power base there are many tasks to be done and many powers can do multiple different tasks. However, if you would like one specific power to do one specific task, what you can do is pick up your power and throw it at that specific task and it will just do that task until it's finished. And yes, I'm aware we just said task many, many times in a row there. Uh, but yeah, this will stop them sort of wandering around and doing whatever they want. Something else I didn't realize for way too long in this game is that when you're checking any of your boxes to store away items from your inventory into a box, instead of doing it one by one, you can actually just press the R button, which is the right bumper button on the Xbox. What this will do is quickly put anything that you already have at least one of in that box from your inventory over to the box. So especially for your common materials such as stone or anything like that, you're always going to have at least one in the box of anyway. So just press the R button and it will transfer everything over from your inventory straight into the box. On a similar note, you can actually organize your power boxes by power deck number, levels, elements, anything like that by just clicking on this little button here on the top right of the power boxes, which makes it a lot easier because you're going to have a bunch of different copies as the way of farming in this game is repeatedly just catching the same pal until you have 10 of them pretty much. So you can have a bunch of spares, so this is a really good way to organize them, especially by power deck number. So if you are one of the few people who are actually focusing a lot on the combat aspect of this game, then you can check the power element charts here, and you can see what's effective against what. And you'll pretty clearly see that fire is objectively the best element in the game, simply for the reason it is effective against both ice and grass, meaning it's also resistant to both ice and grass, which is the only element that is resistant and effective against two different types. So yeah, fire is just pretty obviously the best element in the game for this specific reason. Um, also, many people have been wondering if there is stab in this game. If you played Pokemon before, you probably already know what this means. Stab stands for same type attack bonus. What this means is if you use an attack that is the same element as the pal using it, it has approximately about a 20% bonus. So really all this means for you is if you're using a fire attack, let's say with a fire pal, it's going to deal more damage than if you use that same fire attack with a dark type pal, for example. Now, one of the most important powers you can get very early on if you are just starting out your adventure in power world is Vixie. Now, Vixie has a really cool passive ability called Dig Here, meaning that if we sign Vixie to our farm back in the base, it will automatically keep on digging up power spheres. So as early as you possibly can, catch a couple of Vixies from the location shown on the map here in the game, and then assign them to the farm at your base. That way, every time you come back to your base, you'll notice they've dug up a few more power spheres for you for completely free. This way, you haven't got to waste your very valuable materials early game for crafting more spheres. On a similar note, if you have a Mao, which is this Umbreon-looking cat, they have a similar thing that 
that if you assign them to the farm, they'll dig up money for you, like a bunch of gold coins, so that's a really good way of farming cash. Regular mouths aren't actually found on the world map, you can only catch them really inside the dungeons randomly. So if you ever see one of these dark caves and you go inside, if you see a mount, make sure you catch a few of those if you want to farm some gold. If you're wondering what to do with all that money, uh, the most useful thing I've found to really spend money on is bullets. As bullets are kind of a pain to craft, especially earlier to mid-game, what you can do is come to this shop down here near the Fisherman's Point and speak to the merchant right here and he sells pretty much every type of ammo except for the rocket launcher obviously. And this honestly is probably the best way you can spend your money on this game. And if you need a bit of extra cash, usually just below where this merchant is down here on the pier, there's also going to be a PAL vendor which can obviously sell you some powers but also will buy your powers off of you if you have way too many. So this is a nice way to make some quick cash as well if you need some extra ammo. If you ever come across any of these little green statues, make sure you're picking those up. These can be used as statues of power to increase your capture rate, which is obviously really useful in a game like this. There are a bunch of these statues of power all over the world, especially in the churches. And you can also actually craft one later on in your very own base. So make sure you're picking up these green statues. As of so far, I think they found almost 400, if not over 400 in the entire world. There's also a really cool trick for the randomly generated dungeons. These are the ones that randomly spawn and despawn at the sort of dark caves you go into, not the ones with the circle entrance on the ground that always have the same bosses. So if you are in one of these random dungeons and just before you get to the boss room, you sort of take a quick peek in and see what the alpha boss looks like in there. And if it's not one that you're interested in, you can actually backtrack through one room and then turn back around and look inside the boss room again and the boss will have actually regenerated into a different boss. Depending on when you're watching this video this will probably get patched out but if you are still on the early stages of the game definitely try this out. If you are wondering about the respawn times on the alpha, the world bosses, these are the ones that have their very own icon on the map. They actually spawn after one exact in-game day. Now how long an in-game day actually lasts it depends on you as you can actually alter how long you want the day and night to last. So if you do want to farm these for whatever reason for the legendary schematics for example go back to the main menu and then just before starting game again you can actually click down here to sort of change the world settings. These are really pretty much cheat codes other than being able to change the length of time and day. You can also change like how much damage you do, how much damage you receive, your catch rate, your XP gain rate. You can change pretty much everything in here so these are cheat codes so if you don't want to ruin your experience, definitely be careful what you're actually changing here. But for farming these, a really good thing is just to make the days and nights a lot shorter. Something I've actually seen on Reddit that looks pretty cool. Unfortunately, I don't know the original source as so many people have been uploading it now. Uh, but something you can do is when you catch a pal, you can stand on top of the pal sphere as it's capturing it. And when it successfully captures it, it will boost you off into the air and you go flying. So this is a great way to get some height, let's say if you don't have a fly mount yet, and then you can sort of just glide around, I guess. I don't know, it doesn't have really much use, but it's kind of cool. So that's all there's to it, guys. I hope you did find this video helpful. If you did, don't forget to thumbs up button. Make sure you leave in the comments down below any extra tips you've discovered in this game, and we'll see you next time.